Today, we're gonna to take a look at halftones in Etzelcam. We'll give a brief overview of some of the prep work you need to do to your image, and we will have a follow-up video on that later on down the road. All right, let's get into this. For materials, we're gonna be using PVC board. We got a white and a black. We're gonna paint the white board black and the black bo board white before we cut. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the video. One of the first things I like to do is get rid of the background. So if you're in Photoshop or GIMP, you can use the selection tool, select what you wanna keep and get rid of the rest. The other way we can get rid of the background is doing a vector clipping mask like Illustrator or Inkscape. And to do this, we are simply gonna use our pen tool to outline the areas we wanna keep. Then we will select those and create a clipping mask. And once we've done our clipping mask and everything, we'll wanna export that out into a PNG so we can load it back into our roster software and start making the adjustments we need in there. Now that the we have our selection cropped out, we can go ahead in our roster image software. And first thing we're gonna do is switch over to black and white. No settings really need to be changed here, so we'll just hit okay. But then we'll need to invert. The deal about inverting the white PVC, we have that black on top. So when we carve in, we're gonna be showing white. This does matter. So if we take a look at this Lolo one here, this is one of the first ones I did and totally forgot to re inverse the image. And so that's why it looks off. Uh, on the black one, you do not need to invert. Once we've done the invert, we're gonna go over to levels. Now in levels, I just like to take off a little bit off the total output levels. So the black, we're not gonna get the darkest black or the whitest white. And this just gives us a little bit more control uh, once we get into Etzel Cam. Uh, and you know, if we have a background or we don't want any cutting to happen in a certain place, we can use the black and white to add depth or take away. Also, you can use exposure. Within the exposure, you can change the offset and the gamma correction and all that. I made this uh, give the skin tone a little bit darker so it's gonna be brighter. Just remember we're inverted. And then after that, we're going to add a high pass layer. Now, before you do that, make sure you control copy and create a new layer to put this on. This is gonna be transparent over our bottom layer. And how a high pass works is by creating an image based off the high contrast areas. So this is gonna help give you definition in your eyes, your mouth, your nose. It's gonna really kind of help bring out some of the details. GIMP has this as well. All of these different tools and settings are in both programs, uh, GIMP, Photoshop, or Illustrator and Inkscape. And then I have about a 72% uh, opacity and then we're gonna change it to a hard light for the mixing. So you can see here with my daughter here, the eyes are a little washed out. So we created a new layer. We're gonna come in with the paintbrush and just add a little color in there where we're seeing some dark already. We're just helping give increase that area size. If it's too small, it won't pick up on that at all and it'll just leave it uh, white. So we're going in and just helping uh, the software out a little bit so we can actually get a little bit more detail in the pupils and the side of the eyes. Finishing it up, we're just gonna come in, make sure there's no full black or full white on the levels. So again, just one final level pass. Then we are gonna save this and go back to our vector software. And this is for laying it all out. So we'll bring in our photo, scale it to so it fits how we want it on the board. And I still want to crop off a little bit. So I'm going to draw a square there and crop it down so I can enlarge this, take up a little bit more of the board, center it how I would like it. And then last but not least, we are going to add some font. So I'm going to add family here, get that in there, go find a nice uh, script font. And also that should be good for uh, cutting with a V cut here. I'm just measuring, seeing how wide it is. Now this is again on the whiteboard, which is three millimeters. So I can't go too deep on any of this. 
And what I'm using is my little cheat sheet uh, that I made in open office to make sure, hey, depending upon how uh, wide my bit is, how far I can go down so I don't cut all the way through uh the board so here to get a three millimeter width i uh the height or the depth is going to be 1.5 so we're good we're not cutting all the way through and then again keep, just measure some of these make sure none of them are wider than that three millimeter we're good we're under there and just kind of spot check here and there to see that you're again not going to cut all the way through all right, once we have our font figured out, we are going to expand that or turn it into a vector. So it is no longer a font. And then we're gonna use the Pathfinder to connect everything together to make it one solid vector instead of separate individual pieces. Then we're going to export the image as itself and then also the family vector as itself. The family vector will do as an SVG and we'll do the PNG for the photo. Let's go ahead in here and go open. And we have our inverse image here. We'll open it. Now it's going to give us three options. When we uh, open a photo, we can do carve halftone or laser. We are going to do halftone for this. And you can see it imports our image here, but it is not at the right scale. So our width is going to be 279.4 millimeters. And so that automatically scales it up to 431.8 there. And we're looking good. We got a good um, show in here, but let's talk about the different patterns we can choose from. So this is the one uh, I've used before dot pattern or the interlace pattern so that just offsets the dots like that then we also have the line pattern name is pretty self-explanatory and that is one of the differences once you start getting up to the lines versus the dots you do uh have to kind of sometimes scroll in to really see the difference in the different layers and thicknesses it's going to be cutting at all right, let's move on to the zigzag. And here we go. We got the zigzag line, but my personal favorite, the wave pattern. We've imported our image. We've selected wave pattern. We've adjusted the width. Now let's talk about the grid size. Think of this as line thickness here in line thickness. You want to have a good variation. So let's say you're thick. You pick your thickest line to be less than a millimeter. Okay. So your thinnest line is going to be zero. And then your thickest line is going to be 0.9. That's not a lot of variation to show a wide range of size. We also do not want to pick so large of a number that we lose a lot of detail. So let's say, let's just put, let's make the line, the grid height, 10 millimeters you lose a lot of detail. So we don't want it too high either. So we want to find just the right amount while we can keep detail and also show a good dynamic of range and sizes. So this is really another place where you're going to want to play around depending on the size of your canvas. You might be able to do a much larger grid scale. If say you were doing a four foot by six foot, you know, your scale, of your actual project does matter. And then uh, minimum diameter here, this basically cuts off zero. That's why we messed with the levels, um, taking the white and black off of being true zero or 255. If we bump that up, let's say 20, you can see here, it now draws lines there. We don't want that. We want to keep that clean up there. So we'll drop this back down to zero because that would just take away all our hard work. Next, we got skip lines, and that is basically what it means. The name implies it all. It'll space it out a little bit further. We'll skip every other line, skip every third line. Again, you'll lose detail. And who knows, that may be something you need for your project. I have just not 
ran into a situation where I need that yet. All right, for angle, let's put that at 43, kind of little like a little offset there. And then frequency, that's how long your wave is going to be. So if we drop this down to say 300, it's going to become a lot shorter. There we go. That could be pretty cool, but I like the long wave sign. So we're going to bump this up to 6,000. And then amplitude, I'm going to go with 400. So it's a nice natural line curve. It's not too distracting to see our image because that's one of the drawbacks in Etzel Cam is that you can't switch what it reads as high and low. This is showing black, but when we cut it, remember all this black will be white and all this white will be black. I really wish you could invert in Etzel Cam, but alas, you can't. So you're going to have to invert out in Photoshop or GIMP if your lines are going to be white and your top layer is going to be a dark or a black color. Let's take a quick second to look at what would happen if we imported a non-inverted image to see how this is going to turn out. And we're going to put in all the exact same settings as the previous one. And as you can see, we can see it. It has a lot of good detail. All right. Now we want to pick our bit. We're going to go with the Groovy Jenny. 90 degree bit because that's what I have, but my uh, 30 and 60s should be in tomorrow. So looking forward to those. And the other uh, drawback about using this is you can't save these settings. So here's what you can do. Haha, -ha, spreadsheets. And you can see here, I have all the settings saved in a uh, spreadsheet. So if I ever want to come back or remember what I did, they're right there and takes a little bit of the guesswork out. All right, we're going to save this as a G code. So we go to file, save CNC program, go to our folder here and just family HT halftone. There we go. And you can put underscore G so you know it's G code. Save. Hey, there you go. And then it gives us the preview of the cut program. We'll just go and speed this up a little bit so we can watch it run, make sure there's no issues. And then we'll look at cutting out the vector family part. Next, we are going to import our SVG family so we can do a V carve of that. We'll make sure our, we're going to click on carve, carve the inside of our letters and see there, look at that nice and just simple. Everything is in there. Then we will save this G code and then it's off to cutting. For this cut, I'll be using double-sided tape to hold down the material. Then I'll be using the 90 degree down cut V bit from Cadence Manufacturing. I highly suggest you check out their bits. They are great. It's always important to have a level spoil board when doing cuts on your CNC machine, even more so when you're doing these half tones, especially the lines. If you, if it's uneven or higher or lower in one area, your line thickness is going to change. So if you're cutting in an area where it's lower than the other part, a thicker line is going to become thinner. And so your, the value you read visually is going to change. So you can have almost a gradation effect where you will lose some detail and vice versa. If you're cutting in a part that's higher, it's going to be a thicker line than the rest. So make sure your spoil board is flat. So let's talk about the pros and cons. First, the cons. There is a good amount of pre-work you need to do to your images. There's no way inside Etzel Cam to change your black and white values. And once you've exported your image to G-Code, you lose all the settings. So those are three of the cons of doing this, but there are some pros. Etzel Cam, you can try it out for free. Again, keyword, try it out. And if it's not something you like, you haven't lost any money. 
If you do like it, at the time of this recording, Etzel Cam is $60. With everything else that comes with it, it's a pretty good deal. One of the other pros is typically with the half tones out that I've seen out there on the cheaper to free side, it's all the standard dot ones. You don't really get the option for lines. So this really opens up a new uh, look for you if you wanna go with this. Again, Etzel Cam is not free. It's free to try. It'll get longer and longer to export things the more you use it. I do recommend that you at least try it out, give it a whirl, see if it's something that's gonna fit well within your workflow. I will be doing another video where I go over all of the steps in getting my images ready in more detail. This was just a quick overview in that regards. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you on the next one.